Thank you very much, Agustina Martire, for inviting me for this session of jury and also for this. I'm going to talk about women and cities, and I, I'm trying to explain very briefly why women and cities and why it's so important. Okay, very, very, very briefly, because if you if you have if you have a challenge in the future, this challenge of this the the end of an era, the the climate change, the 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 end of the chip petroleo and the conscience of, of the of the the um, problems that we are causing to our environment we have to change sorry uh, the way we are doing things and we are doing things like this we are not talking about caring we're not talking about life we are, don't, we are only worried on productive issues and no thinking how is the life of all the others, who is doing possible this production uh, um, field. So one thing is we have to change the way we are doing cities, and the other is we have to introduce a gender perspective, women perspective, into the architecture and city uh, and the plan and planning. Because women, we were apart from, from the, the construction of our city, we were in the construction of our city, doing the best things we, we find and the origin. Many of the things were the women. For example, the first roof gain commercial center was designed here in England, well, in England uh, by women, Lady Allen of uh, Hoodwood. Right? And women always be caring of what happened with the, the others, with the city, how we manage our neighborhoods, to make it more uh, equal, more more, uh, uh, more justice, and obviously there is nothing neutral in our life, and urban planning is not neutral. The neutral and universal planning does not not exist. The false neutrality in planning ignores the diversity in our society related to gender, origins, or class, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, etc. So we have to change the way of looking like. This neutrality is not possible, it's not uh, real. We, we need and to be, uh, we, we need to realize that we are different, but by no means the, uh, unequal. That's what happened now. Um, so what we build is this kind of functionalist and segregated cities that was designed from the distance and the maps. Today, uh, there is, uh, I don't know if you here, the professor in health, she explained that 80% of the journeys are made by car. Which journeys? Who made that journeys? I, I beg that is men, mostly white, middle upper class. Where are the women? Where are the children? Where are the youngers? They are not in a car. So when we are talking that everyone's moved by car, who is everyone? So we have to build compact cities. It's the only way to save our planet, save our life, save our time. So, and this city must be designed from the uh, everyday experience and especially everyday experience of women. Why? Because women experience from every life, every day life in cities and knowledge for planning. It's not because, it's because we know very different the city because of our experience for, because of two things. One is the gender role that till now, I don't know here the numbers, but wherever there are numbers of how much time women do to care and how much time do uh, men, is 70% more or less women do all, all that work. And the other thing, so the caring role make us to experience the city in a very different way, the way, the places we, were, we went, the, the time uh, the, uh, the, we experience more, um, much more the, pu the tra public transportation and also because of the sexual body. Because our body, as uh, I think uh, this, morning, this afternoon in the jury, some, someone explained that, our body is not seen in the same way that men body. And also there is another differences in, in other people with another experiences. But we have to work, especially with women, we couldn't do a participatory process, mixing everything, everyone 
uh, at, at the very beginning, because many times women have not the uh, right to to sorry to to talk or the the the, um, the confidence to talk uh, in public. Mary Bear has a very very nice book about that. The power. The, I think there's a I don't remember the name, but it's a very small book. Really, very she clarified a lot why our voice is less valued. Well, Aniko, I, I already said that lack of attention or recognition from governments and society due to the multiple work women do deprive women to the use of the city. We usually use cities that, that are not uh, thought for us, for us as sexual body and for us as gender role. Um, responsibilities. Uh, that means unequal opportunities or rights to access to economical resources, because if we have no time, we, have, we couldn't uh, um, access to resources. And work women do inside and outside the house should be quantified and added to GDP, because it's a lot of money. The way the city has been shaped conditions the women for a limited use of spaces within city, further depriving her of economic opportunities. I, I go back in the past because I, I think that we, 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 we need to know the past to, to look for the future. And Jay Jacobs, she, she explained many of these things in, in, in her book. And I love this initial quote, quote, this book is an attack on current city planning and rebuilding. It's also and mostly an attempt to introduce new principles of city planning and rebuilding, different and even opposite from those now, now, then and now, now, uh, in everything, uh, from schools of architectural planning to the uh, Sunday supplements and women's magazine. It is an attack rather on a principles and aims that have shaped modern orthodox city planning and rebuilding. I shall be main, mainly be writing about common, ordinary things, the things that are valuable is the things that are important because it's our life. These ordinary things is, are our life. She said, she said, ordinary things, what kind of city street are safe and what kind are not? We have to learn what happened in the space. What of the space explain what that the street function or not? Why some uh, city parks are marvelous and others are vice traps and death traps? I love about that. Um, 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 an uh, a survey that was made in, in London, in the park of London, a few times ago for, for, um, by a group of city, city, women's city design, uh, design, something like that. And what make a, how do you know that a park or what makes the people feel safer in a park? I love, there's not only one answer, but the, the one that is a little more answer than the other is seeing people smiling in the street, in the park. I love that because if you smile, you are tra um, tranquil. <laughs> you, are, no? you, are, you feel well because if you, if you not, don't have any special personal worry thing, but if not, the face is relaxed. So I, I like uh, this, <laughs> this, this uh, idea. Why some slums? Stay slums and other slums regenerate themselves ever again against financial and official opposition. What makes downtown shift their centers? What, if anything, is a city neighborhood? And what job, if any neighborhood, is great city to? So, so we have to work from this experience from a daily life, and we need to work with the people there. This is one of the biggest workshop we made with the. A participation workshop in, in Catalonia with hundreds of women, but to 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 do this uh, for doing this possible, there were six previous months of working social working, putting little by little together all these women that came from different backgrounds, different ideas, one from the other, and also they don't look one to the the other in a very confident way. So. To arrive with a participatory process in, a, in the urban form, in the urban layout, and about the space, we need first, obviously, this special work with the social work. So experiences from daily life. The cities are complex systems. There is not a simple answer, not an only answer. It's not a direct uh, one plus one is two. It's not like that. 
and human being in the, is the center. All that came from the book of Jane Jacobs. And some professor <laughs> in my school said to me, OK, stop to talk about Jane Jacobs. And I say, At the day you stop talking about Le Corbusier, I'm going to stop talking to Jane Jacobs. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if we have listened and, 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 and followed her advisor, the cities, we are, not, we are not talking about the end of the high, the, 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 the lively neighborhood, all the things we are talking today, no? So we still have this to follow. And also we can go back in the, in the past, uh, still in the, in the same time with the suffragette movement, especially in England and, and, and in North America, this suffragette movement also asked for having better neighborhoods. And they create, especially in, in, in America, this idea of the municipal housekeeping. As we are the ones who take care of the house, well, we're going to say you, governant, to take care of the, of the city, clean the city. Not only the, the big avenue, the important, the everyday life neighborhood where the workers and the kids live. So clean the city, make the city a uh, um, public spaces for the kids and um, bathroom, public bathroom at the moment. And well, okay, looking what is behind the big facade, the big buildings, no, that, all that. And this experience, Jane Adams, who learned from, sorry, missing that B, Jane Adams, who learned from many experiences also here in the United Kingdom of these houses that were built in the poor neighborhood at the moment, houses, the idea of here, well, in, in London, uh, Toynbee Hall, for example, the idea of the Toynbee Hall was to, to make these um, privileged university, university students to live and to know by uh, first hand the, how the poor people live and what are their necessities, because it's the only time in their life of this rich and, and and privileged group of students, the only time that they have to, to, to know all these, these people, and when they, in the future, they are going to be the, 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 the leaders of a country, so they can think, maybe, about these people that never in their life they are going to meet. So I think that's, that was very important. We can find this also now. This is in La Paz, Bolivia. It's a feminist group called Mujeres Creando Women Creating. And well, it's very interesting. And also they have a kindergarten open 24 hours, seven over seven, 30, 30 65, um, uh, 100 days there. Because, well, it's very interesting. But there is it's a kind of similar to that of, of the, the Toynbee Hall or the Jane Adams Hull House. We work also on this idea maybe without knowing about this before, but finally, when we have this perspective, we arrive to the same place. And in India, with a group of students from Barcelona, we propose this idea of the Women Resource Zone, trying to give the women the opportunity to learn, but also to work, because they're having the poor neighborhoods in Delhi, and in many cities also it's the same. They have the opportunities maybe to, to learn a profession, but they don't have the opportunity to find a job, nor to open a job, because they have no access to financial aid, and they could they could move from their neighborhood to another neighborhood where they can have the job. So putting all this together, and also trying the, the women as a human being, but also as a component of, of a family. So this kind of of facility that share different activities of the productive and reproductive or uh, responsibilities. In, uh, I, I, I haven't been the experience, but I have been the director of planning director of a city beside Barcelona, Santa Coloma Gramanet, and there we, we with the, the um, aid and the force of the major, she and we create a kind of building like this in, in Santa Coloma that now is finished, and it's a very interesting program. So the, the idea was to, to put no, in a specific, a basic program, but also depending on the neighborhood where this kind of 
of, of building where to be built, you, you can uh, adapt the program in, in behalf of this place. And the idea also, this idea we're going to see in another example, is that may, many times when we talk about maybe the main street or when we make a, pro, um, a project, a design to upgrade the neighborhood, we look from a very, from a bare uh, point of view. And many times the, 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 the streets that links a day, everyday life necessities are not this the straight the street that is more related with the car and with other others. So here, what was the, 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 the fund, finding of these other streets that generate that axis, not, rec, not linear axis, but that connect uh, daily life. And for me, this is gender perspective, but also feminist perspective. And I love this <laughs> definition of feminism. That is the radical notion that women are people. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. And but from this perspective, we found other priorities, or we have other priorities, other values and principles, those other processes, and other solution. It's not the question of the form, final form. It's the question of the process. Because always, everyone asks me, what is the form? It's not the question of forms. It's not the question of meters. It's a question of having this. Uh, so other processes bring other solutions. Participation, self-organization, active listening, value chain, and participant observation. This is a work in Buenos Aires we made in 2013-14 in one of the poorest areas of the city where you have all uh, um, social complex from modern complex from the 70s, but also a slum, shanty towns, and also regular city. And we made the work with, with women there, uh, talking about their daily life, recognizing their first in a, in a map, uh, and, and later on, walking with them in the streets and trying to understand when they say, I don't like this, why they don't like this, and what can we make from our professional perspective, sometimes are a question of space, sometimes are a question of activities, people, wherever. So at the end, we also make here the proposal of this axis from everyday life. It is violet axis. It's not the, 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 the linear line, but it's the one that connects with the school, with the bridge, with the square, and the popular um, dinner places, uh, um, I don't know them in English. Well, all this, connect all these spaces that the women go every, every day, and also uh, avoid some corner or spaces where they find uh, unsafe. And also working with them, what also is um, put into the light is in some, in many of these neighborhoods, one thing that this, there is nothing, because there is nothing that came from the public uh, or from the government. But the people, organ well, you say all that, the people organize themselves, especially women, and they have houses that function like a kindergarten or spaces to gather, sec security spaces because of the relationships. So it's very important to work with them to understand which are the spaces. Okay, so that is the, the last images is are about an example, because I wrote a book a few years ago about women in planning and architecture, because in the School of Architecture, we have no woman as a protagonist of any history, but women were, we, we were in history. And Jacoba Mulder was a planning director of Amsterdam uh, city, uh, city government after uh, Cornelius Van Esteren, and she worked with him at the beginning. Her first project was this, uh, the big park of Amsterdam. And what is very interesting is that she didn't uh, design only the park, Shasa Parks. She thought about the different uh, necessities of different ages, but also to create a public park that could also generate work, not, on, not only um, to waste money, but also to generate work for people here. here. 
Anol. I'm, and one of her best known uh, polit policies is this, the creation of this pocket play playground in the center of the city that many times it says that it was designed by Aldo Van Eyck. Obviously, Aldo Van Eyck worked there as a designer, but the idea came from her. She observed what happened in the street. Kids were, because they were at that moment after um, the Second World War, they were working in the south of the city building new housing areas, and they left the old town for later because to, to bunch of money and very detailed. But anyway, there were people and kids living there. And she saw a, a kid play in a small spot with, with uh, earth and nothing. And she said, okay, we have to do something for them. And, and, and she uh, created a policy that said, okay, the, peop uh, the people has to find the place, empty space with a lot of bar um, burgers, no, uh, basura. <laughs> and, and, and people who need it. So the necessity and the opportunity. And then this the city government made the arrangement, if it's a public or private land, and do the project. The idea is that all these projects were um, temporal. In, in some cases, are public spaces or public, public land. In other cases, are small plots. And all these elements were designed by Aldo Van Eyck that were really clever because you have a, a very cheap elements to, uh, to combine in many different ways. So it's not only one way to play. You, they can play and also the presence of water, of sun, of different and also materials. Or here, this is very actual, no? the, the, the idea of or organize the transit and giving more space for, for, for people or this kind of empty plot. It's clear this is a square, but that one is very clear that it's an empty plot due to the bomb. And it's still there, a few of them. And also it's still a place to play, it's really nice. Because many times we, we the last times we, we design or we put in our playgrounds very, all the same elements, all, and it's very boring. So, and here, one kid could play alone, but also they could play in a group or wherever they want. They can imagine. No? And many of the playgrounds that we have in the last years are really boring and no, no, um, doesn't generate any, any imagination. Well, also she worked a lot in housing units, but just to finish, well, I have another thing, but in the 72, when she finished, uh, to work, working in the Amsterdam uh, City Hall. He entered in the University of Amsterdam as an emeritus professor. And one, many of the things he, she said at the moment, for example, public transportation, she said, if we, don't, if we are not able to manage the private transportation, that one to came to the center of the city, and we are going to lost our cities, because it's impossible that all these cars came into the cities. And that's why maybe it's, uh, it's a, uh, a country with good tra public transportation. Also, it's at the same time, a few years later was the, the, the big demonstration to, ha to take cars from the neighborhood because of the safety, etc. But I want to finish with this um, phrase that is a Susan Marie Wilka uh, answer uh, to Peter Hall, who talk about uh, the fathers of the urbanism. And she said that the problem is that the history of the urbanism only take into account the city management and the, and the practical city movement, but they don't take into account the city social. If they were realized that to do all this is necessary to put in the middle the people, and in, in that, issues where the women working at that time and now <laughs> also. So, well, I, I left it here. Thank you very much. <laughs>